and pulled you from that situation, that place. And I remember, forgive me, Pastor, but I was on a carpet face down. And I breathed in and I said, Lord, I won't take another breath unless you lift me up off this floor and keep me going. And I was at that place when they were singing and worshiping. I was at that place face down, tears pouring and crying out, Jesus, that's all I had. See, sometimes you don't have to say anything. Sometimes it's just the utterance like, mm. Lord Jesus. Y'all forgive me because I, I don't know how you feel right now. We 
reading from God's word. Now, so today, we've, we've, we've kind of walked along this giving process. But I want you guys to recognize something about giving that's relational. That's heart. Your heart is relational to giving. Because if you don't give from your heart, your offering is not received. I just, I, I, I can't help but say that. I'm, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings or take anyone's pride away or take what they thought was an awesome gift away. But if it doesn't start or resonate in the heart, it's stifled. It hits the wall. Because what God requires is our heart. And that's the most difficult thing that we hold on to is our heart. So, I have three quick principles to help you with that. One, give with trust. Trust in Him that He's faithful towards your giving. So, trust. The next, be generous with your giving. It is a demonstration of your heart. Do you have a generous heart? You have to ask yourself that. That's challenging. So, do or do I have a generous heart, Lord? Ask him the question. He'll answer it honestly. He'll give you an honest answer. And that's what we want. And then the third principle is remember your heart is tied directly to your giving. They are coupled. When they come before the Lord, he sees your gift as your heart. So now, so that's your challenge this week. Is my gift, my heart, unto the Lord? See, that challenged me this morning. I had to think. I said, Lord, I, I want to connect the two. See, because if you go throughout Scripture, it says one thing. Heart, 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 heart. The Lord is always wanting everything to flow from the heart. As the heart goes, as you go. So what's closest to your heart? Family, friends, money, all the things that keep you going. That's the closest things to your heart. Now, how do you separate that? Because God doesn't go on behind all that. He has to go in front of it. So when you start to give, you have to say, Father, help this gift come from my heart. And if I can look down at it and I'm satisfied that it came from my heart, then I know it's a gift that's worthy of him. David did it best. David did everything because he wanted to build a beautiful temple to the Lord. So he gave out of his own funds, the king's fund, and he built this up. And the Lord said, no, David, you can't build the temple. But in the meantime, I'll build your house. I'll make your house great. So you, you see... In the preparation of giving, God is there. Just like Pastor told us about him being in the waiting room. Well, he's in the waiting room of your preparation to give. As you prepare your heart, God is there. All you have to do is ask him. Push me from him. And he'll jump right in. That's what David did. David says, I give nothing to the Lord that costs me nothing. See, that's, remember I told you about the cable TV and all the stuff we have, this useless that we hold on to, all the trinkets and the Amazon shopping we do, this useless, some of the stuff just sit, and I don't feel like return it ain't that much, I'm going to sit, but that is offering, that's sacrificial, I'm not going to buy that, I'm going to give that, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to give that, when the little children come up to you in the gas station for the candy money, and you get a little attitude, because you're like, this is a hustle, this is a scam, no, 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 it's a setup. It's a setup to you. It's a test. Do you give unto the Lord or do you give unto the person? See, there's a difference. You need to give unto the Lord. I'm going to bless you, baby. I don't want your candy. I don't want your stuff. But I'm going to bless you. Now, what happens to that money? That's not your concern. That's between God and them. God and parents. God and whoever directed them. That's where that goes to. Let your heart be freely. When you give tips at a restaurant, give generously. Don't hold back to the well, oh, I, she was rude. She didn't do me right. You don't know what she's going through. You don't know where she's at in life. Be generous. Be kind. That might be the only kind word she heard all day. It was a struggle getting there. Feeding three kids. 
So I ended up babysitting. No, I got to leave them home alone because I don't even have nobody to watch it. And I got to work. And they see you when you get in a restaurant and they having a rough day and you turn and say, I, I can give her nothing because she is. No, no, no. Heart. Transition is going on in this church. What pastor is feeding us is changing our heart. The Lord says, I want your heart. I want to change your heart. I want to redirect you from the heart. Thank you. Woo! Lord, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Woo! Man. So don't lay up treasures here, folks. Lay up treasures where they really matter. Put them there. Put them where your heart is. As we close our eyes and we pray over this offering, Father, we ask you this morning to help us with our heart problem. We ask you to be a cardiologist this morning, Father. We want open heart surgery this morning on our giving, Father. Get in there, Father, and do the things you do. Make us kind. Give us the fruits of the Spirit. Make us loving. Make us patient. Make us long-suffering, Father. Let us be a representation of you today with our gifts. Help open our minds and hearts to you. Connect us. Wire our heart into your heart so that we display the characteristics of Christ as we walk, Father. Not how we're treated, but how we treat others. Despite our circumstances, Father, you're it, you're all, you're perfect, you're faultless, and you love us unconditionally. So let that be our stand today, Father. You are performing heart surgery, Father. Without anesthesia, you're right there, Father. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
the word this morning? I believe there's a word from God that's going to prepare the way for the word. Thank you. 
When people get the Holy Ghost, we like their fan of them. We don't want them to over exert themselves, but the only thing I want to be fanned is that flame. Y'all better help me here. I want that flame to be contagious. That when Sister Dara walks around, somebody else will get the shot. Y'all better help me here. Y'all better help me here. Went 
all the people had crossed the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, now choose 12 men, one from each tribe. Tell them to take 12 stones from the very place where the priests are standing in the middle of the Jordan. Carry them out and pile them up at the place where you will camp tonight. So Joshua called together the 12 men he had chosen, one from each of the tribes of Israel. He told them, go into the middle of the Jordan in front of the ark of the Lord, your God. Each of you must pick up a stone and carry it out on your shoulder. Twelve stones and all, one for each of the twelve tribes of Israel. He, We will use these stones to build a memorial. In the future, your children would ask you, what do these stones mean? Then you can tell them, they remind us that the Jordan River stopped flowing when the Ark of the Lord's covenant went across. These stones will stand as a memorial among the people of Israel forever. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to share with these, your people. Now, God, it is not lost with me that you could have chosen anyone, but you chose me, so I say thank you. And now, God, I pray for them, that you will sit the self and selfishness down in me, and Lord, you will rise. Speak a word to and through me as your living and willing vessel. And then, God, I pray for these, your people, for they are yours and not mine. Give them ears to hear, heart to receive, and the mind to do. And in Jesus' name, we do pray that every heart say amen. amen. Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. let the record show. Let the record show. So maybe talk to your other neighbor. That one right now. Say, neighbor, neighbor, let the record show. Let the record show. You may be seated in the presence of of the Almighty God. Let the record show. Come on, sir. Brief pass. We have been journeying these last few weeks in the book of Joshua. God has been doing some amazing things to him. God has been speaking some directions to us as a house and to us individually um, as his people. In this book, we see that God is really showing us what it means to be all in and be um, collectively moving with one purpose. Uh, last week, we talked about his presence. We talked about how um, he went first. His, the Ark of the Covenant would symbolize his presence and um, he went first as as the ark went first. Now the people were able to walk across the Jordan that was filled with water and now it was dry. And now we are at the place in chapter four where now they are transitioning from the river to dry land. And here it is, we see God give instructions to Joshua on how to manage and do some things before they get to Jericho. I need y'all to catch that. Yeah. That before they got to the land that was promised, before they got to the land that God had them, that there were some things he had to get straight through the Jordan and Gilgal. Well, you're going to catch that later. That before you get to the destiny that God has for you, that you have to go through a Jordan and a Gilgal. Yes, yes. Come on now, oh, I'm gonna talk to the wall because the wall, yeah. you know, the wall gonna talk back to me. Wall before you get to your destiny, before you get to the place that God promised you, you have to go through a Jordan and a Gilgal. What is that saying? Because before you get to the place that God has destined for you, he got to take you through a Jordan and a gig out so you can have an experience with God. So when you get to your Jericho, you won't forget your God. And I'm talking to anybody today that God wants to deal with you in the Jordan. So when you get to the Jericho, you know how to treat your God. So here it is, as I was studying, and, I, and since the star, I'm going to talk to you for a little bit. I was racking my brain. I said, oh, I said, Lord, I'm reading this. Huh? This is what you got for me? I said, what, 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 what do we call this? Uh -huh. what, 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 I, can't, I was struggling with a title. Uh -huh. 
looking at it and I'm saying, ah. So I kept studying and building and I said, ah, oh, God, I, you want me to come here with no name? Okay, we we'll just, we'll just no name. Okay. The Lord says, no, I want you to pull up the record. I want you to, to, to talk about my record. Talk about my hand. Talk about my power. Talk about my provision. I want to talk about me. Talk about, and so here it is about, look at that, that, that saying, let the record show. That is a saying that, that somebody says in a meeting that there is a record that's being recorded so that, so that as time goes on, we can always go back to the record and say, no, on this day, at this time, this was said. And so when somebody says, let the record show, uh -huh. they means an account in, in the permanent form, in writing, preserving knowledge or information about facts Back. or events. An account uh -huh. in permanent form. Uh -huh. So that means the record does not show in pencil. Uh -huh. It shows in permanent ink that cannot be edited. Uh -huh. So it says, let the record show means in an in account, in a permanent form, in writing, preserving knowledge mm -hmm. or information about facts. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. See, that's the word. Not about untruths. Uh -huh. okay. Not about opinions. Yes, sir. Not about lies. Yeah. But about facts. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but God deals with the facts. Yeah. And everything that we see here is facts or events. So here it is. He says, he says, let the record show. That I believe today that God is standing in the midst of this, of this, of this worship experience. And in the midst of this worship experience, he is saying, um, arguing who he is to his people. Because sometimes we don't trust him. Sometimes we doubt him. And so I believe today that he says, I'm going to let the record show who I am and what I do and what I'm capable of doing. I want you for this season of your life to let the record show. Never have to explain yourself of why you are, where, who you are, where you are, where you are. You don't have to uh, uh, never defend that anymore. Because oh, some of you people are saying, you know, how did you get here? <laughs> I can't believe. How'd you get here? Here it is. You tell them, let the record show. If the car. I served. Yes, sir. Got to be here. Uh -huh. I never shall forget. I was out here, bought a home in Virginia, and, and, and man, ooh, -wee. that was it for us. It was our dream home. 2,600 square feet. Ooh. Had a man room. Ooh. Yeah. Separate myself from all these girls living in my house. Yeah. Had the front lawn, the back lawn. Listen, we was good. And I never shall forget, I mean, me and my wife at that time, I think what was it? I think she was an E6 and we was an E5, so and I was an E5. So at that time, you know, we weren't making, we really weren't making a whole bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we knew what to do with what God gave us. Yes. Oh, That's another message for another time. Stewardship. Yes, <laughs> and so I had somebody that was in the military same rank as I was. He said, man, what do you do? I said, what you mean? No way you can afford this. Yeah. I said, now nah, I'm offended. <laughs> First off, who gave you access to my bank account? <laughs> who gave you access to my wallet and to my personal information? He said, there's no way. How many more jobs you work? None. But, but the one we work together in the Air Force. No, no, can't be. And then the Lord said, let the record show Come on, sir. that the God that I serve Come on, provided this for me. But let me help you and encourage you. The same God I serve who did it for me is the same God that has no respect of person and he can do it for you. Let the record show that the same God I serve is the same God you serve. Let the record show that if God Cover you are, 
Then my mom and dad, 14. Then my cousin. It'd be sometime on a Sunday, be 20 people. He said, every Sunday, my mama had two meats. I said, two meats? <laughs> chicken and beef? Uh, Y'all better help me here. Come on. It wasn't chicken or beef. Right. It was egg. Yeah. I said, now, Dad, make that make sense. Yeah. That one salad, yeah. on. one chef on. can feed 20 people. Yeah. Make that make sense. Y'all better help me here. Why couldn't he just go straight to Jericho? Yes, sir. 
Here's what I want to let you know, and I want you to write this down. Just because it's yours doesn't mean there won't be no effort on your part. You better say it again. Just because it's yours, just because it's your promise, doesn't mean there's no effort on your part. That's where the frustration is, Mike. Because we get frustrated that, God, you promised me. Right. Here it is. The promise is for you to hold on to. Yeah. That when hell comes, you're holding on to the promise. Oh, yeah. mm. I need to lay my hat there for one minute. That when he promised you something, it is for you to have a preview. Yeah. That no matter where you're going, you still know what the end of it's going to be. Yeah. And that's our problem. We're getting frustrated, but you forgot he already told you the ending before the beginning.
church with the saints. I'm standing on the promises of God. Why aren't you standing? I got a promise and catch this. Hold on, wait a minute. I, I got to let you all get that. When we say I'm standing on the promises, it'll let me know that the promises are that strong to hold me. That when we say I'm standing on the promise, that means that the promise of this is a sure ground. Well, y'all didn't catch that. That that promise is a sure foundation. So it's a promise. And so I'm standing on it. That I ain't moving. Come stand on the promise. My wife always tells me, she said, boy, when you be on the bitches, you be scared of me. I said, but I trust the bitches. And some of us trust these bitches more than we trust God. Oh, but I trust God because he ain't never dropped me. Oh, I trust God because he ain't never left me. I trust God because he ain't never, he has never failed me. And we always say, yeah, I ain't saying yet because he ain't gonna never fail me. He ain't never failed me, period. Come on, say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, he never failed, period.
key grows an inch. Right. Yeah. You put a mark there. Yeah. They come back six months, you put another mark. Yeah. They come back a year later, you put another mark. There's a record yeah. of growth. There's a record to track. You need to do that in your spiritual life. Jesus. In your spiritual Jesus. life, you need to have something written down. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. That the Lord told me to tell you that as y'all are writing, as we are writing out our wheels, we need to write out a record. That when we dead and gone and they read our last will and testament, the reader will say, and they wanted you to also know that on this day, God brought them through. On this day, God brought them through. On this day, God brought them through. On this day, God did this. On this day, God did this. And they're telling you so you would know that they are gone, but God is still with you. Got two landmarks. Mm -hmm. Deal with that. Got two landmarks. Mm -hmm. Got one here. Mm -hmm. One here. Now, for some of us, we would say, well, Pastor, we always say never look back. Because we look back, we go back. So here it is. I want you to write this down. We should never look back to go back. Mm -hmm. But it's okay to use past outcomes for today's obstacles. Yeah. 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 Say it one more time. One more time. I'm not looking back. To go back. Uh -huh. But here's what I'm having. I have my past outcomes yeah. for my future obstacles. Yeah. So the rules, I want to let you know something. That just because it's a different storm, don't mean it's going to be a different outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Different storm, same outcome. Uh -huh. yeah. Different test, same outcome. Yeah. Different year, same outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Why do I say that? Because we need to understand something. It's God all the way. Yeah. And if you remember that, listen, I got. Last year, it was God. Two years prior, it was God. Yes, sir. 2015, it was God. Yes, sir. 2024, it was going to be God. 2030, it's going to be God. What are you saying? I'm saying that get this, I won't get all bent out of shape when I got a new obstacle. Because yeah. I'm carrying the same outcome. Y'all yeah. didn't catch that. That's why he wanted them to have a memorial so you would know the power of God. So you would know what God brought us through. Yes, sir. Here it is. I got four minutes. Here it is. I got the same outcome for every obstacle because here's, here's what's going to happen. This is not the only obstacle they're going to go through. So now they'll never have to cry, even though they might. God, you left me. Cause they can go, let me go back to to right. Gilead. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, that's what he. Did. Okay, oh, in Jericho, because what he did in Gilgal, uh -huh. and I got a landmark. He gonna put another one here too. Come on, come on, come on here. Go back to the Jordan. Oh, there's a there's a there's a memorial there. Yeah, where he taking me next. I'm good. That's what God is trying to build with you. He's trying to build something in you that will make you keep going forward. Because at your obstacles is where you pause. Oh, Holy Spirit, you're working this thing. At your obstacle, is instead of you going through the obstacle, you let the obstacle dictate to you how you move. And you, and you all, your emotions make me cry sometimes. Y'all better help me here. You go through all your emotions and your feelings going all through what you're going through. You're going all through that when you don't understand. Listen, he brought, what am I tripping over? Yes, He's been bringing me since the day I was born. I'm about to be 36 in a few weeks. Every storm and hellhound that shall come on my track, the God that I serve, he brought me through the hellhounds of my past and he's going to give me the victory over the hellhounds of my future. Y'all better help me here. The same God. Yeah. Your neighbor's a neighbor. Yeah. Same God. Yeah. I got two minutes. So I talked about two sets of stones. Talked about one in the place. Talked about one in the Jordan River. Let's go. I said, Lord, now wait a minute. Why do I have two sets of stones? The one here, they can see. But the one here, once his presence leaves, uh -huh. once his presence leaves, the water's going to come back rushing mm -hmm. 
to the river, and they will no longer be able to see the stones. Ooh, come on, sir. So what's the point of the stones? He said, I want you to let you know something. I want you to remember where I brought you to, but I want you to remember where I brought you through. I want you to remember where I brought you to, dry land. But I want you to remember where I brought you through. Here it is. That if the river has a drought yeah. and there is no water, yeah. you'll see the stones. Y'all yeah. didn't catch that. Yeah. When you see a drought, oh Lord, we in trouble. Yeah. But we'll see the stones. Yeah. We got in trouble. Y'all didn't catch that. He brought me to it. Yeah. I'm good. That was after that. But I remember what he brought me through. So catch this, when there is a drought and I'm going through, I go back, man, he brought me through this and gave me provision in this, then I'm not going to get mad with the drought because I remember he brought me through it. Lord have mercy. And somebody needs to be reminded of what he brought you through. He's brought you through seed and unseen danger. He brought you through many tall and dangers. Uh, he's brought you through many mistakes. Uh, he's through many snares. He brought you through. And God said, I want you to be reminded that I'm going to bring you through. Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm bringing, he's bringing you through. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he's bringing you through. Say, neighbor, he's bringing you through. No, you got to encourage your neighbor. I need you to help me because I got to get up out of here. I want you to put your left ear, your left hand, 
church for 18 months with no pastor. Then God ain't gonna let me get here. And it falls. Come on, sir. Because this is what I want to tell you. If I get out of pocket, the Lord will remove me and put somebody else here. Because this house has the hand of God on it. See, I need you to catch this. God did this for Joshua so that the people could see that as he was with Moses, so shall it be with you. Y'all didn't catch that. Because he let them know that this has everything to do with my people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not who's leading them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If I get a pocket today, my son ain't gonna fail. Because the hand of God is on this house. I ain't no dummy, I ain't no fool. I'm young, but I got a little wisdom. That's right. I know what it looks like when somebody has the hand of God on them and when they don't. And this house has a hand on it. It's the hand of the Almighty God. That's why one of the things I said when I got here to the roof, there's no history in our foyer. Amen. There's no history. That's why I said he can say our first pastor and our founders. Yeah. Yes, yes. Let the record show. That's a landmark. Y'all still got that house? Y'all still got that house where the church started at? No. Don't have it? You know what? Juanita, come get me one day. And let's ride by there. Here's why I say that. Because everybody, I don't really know. I know it, but I don't know where it was. And as a leader who knows that God's taking us somewhere that I don't even, I can't even fathom or imagine. I need to go to some of our landmarks. You know, often I go to that land where the first building was. And I just walk on it. That's a landmark. I go to the second one. And I look at it. That's a landmark. And then some days I go into this place. And look at it. That's a landmark. Oh, but can I tell you? That every so oh, don't you tell me. <laughs> that every so often I stop at the corner. Yeah. Yeah. And when y'all see dirt, yeah, yeah. I don't see dirt. Yeah. My eyes go up. Yeah. And I begin to see what shall be.
came across. Every time I drive real limited, I always look at the empty land. I said, ooh, they're going to see a limit home. Ooh, they're going to afford a house for our people. We're going to bring them in for a year and teach them how to become renters to owners. I'm going to keep it clear. Y'all may not believe it, but I'm going to declare somebody going to catch it. And somebody going to run with it. Somebody going to say, Pastor, remember what you declared? I got some information for that. Listen, listen, when I look at different stuff. I told my wife the other day. I got to go. I told her yesterday. I said, babe. I It's on me. I said, babe, I am now okay with who I am. That God has called me to be who I am, and I'm okay with that. All right. I'm okay with seeing stuff that can't nobody else see. It used to frustrate me, Shanice. Y'all can't see that? Trinity used to frustrate me, but now I'm okay yeah. that God has called me to be a prophetic voice yeah. to decree and declare yeah. those things that shall be. Yeah. So I'm okay now. Shall be. Yeah. Because here it is, whether you believe it or not, it's going to be. You know why? Because he promised me. Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, Trinity, it shall be. So here's what I want to let you know. Stop being upset when people say, I don't see that. Okay. Just keep watching. Because it shall be. Stop trying to explain yourself and try to try to swim to somebody to see it. No, don't worry about it. It shall be. Man, that's the word right there. I need a t-shirt, man. It shall be. It shall be. I'm decreeing and declaring. Deep, it shall be. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. We stand up in the building.
and the promises attached to it. So now, God, I pray for strength today. I pray, oh God, that you would touch your people even right now. Mm. Lord, Lord, I pray that through all that was said, that there will be clear instructions that God, you have proven yourself time and time again to be a faithful God. Father, forgive us when we doubt you. Forgive us at the time that, oh God, that we did not trust you. And God, we pray now in the name of Jesus to have your way in our lives. Build up our faith and our confidence in you, oh God. And God, we thank you now for reminding us of what you brought us to, but what you also brought us through. Now, God, I pray for clarity and thinking. Pray for healing. I pray for breakthrough. God, I pray now for strongholds being broken. I pray now for deliverance. I pray now for healing. In the name of Jesus. God, have your way now. And God, we thank you. And God, we bless you. I thank you, oh God. For the ways upon ways upon ways that you're making even right now. I thank you, oh God, for the strength that you're adding to your people. I thank you, oh God, for the healing. I thank you, oh God. Now, God, we give your name praise. We give your name all the glory. Now, God, I pray for the one who's struggling with their faith. They're struggling with the spirit of depression. They're struggling with letting strongholds and addictions go. Then, God, I pray now you will give them power. Power now, God. And the faith to open up their mouths and call on your name. Father, I pray you do it now. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you in advance. We thank you in advance. It's in Jesus' name. Come on, bless God and say amen.
do see your peace. A do see your prosperity. A do see your anointing. Come on, let's be able to name up. Yeah. <laughs> 